groundwater protection. Back to what I was showing you earlier, the one issue that you've got is when you have this groundwater here like this, we got this hard clay soil, I guess I'm erasing stuff, and I told you the good thing was is it blocked the radon. Well, now the bad problem is is when something seeps into the ground and hits that hard clay surface, it will migrate right towards a water source. So there are groundwater issues that they have to deal with because in Indiana, our water table is very high, meaning it in some places it may only be 16 feet from the surface of the ground do you hit water? Well, that's not a big issue if the liquid is the is a Sprite that you dumped out from McDonald's, but what about farmers spraying pesticides on their plants? What about asphalt when they put new cement down and new asphalt on roads? All of that creosote soaks into the water. So there could be issues with groundwater, and if you ever sell farm homes, you may get that in their well issues. You know, you got farmers spraying pesticides in a farm, and the farmhouse has a well, and now all those pesticides could be running right to that well water. So they created this thing called the Safe Drinking Water Act. The Safe Drinking Water Act was passed in 74, by Nixon to ensure that drinking water was filtered and created to be safe for people to drink. In our scenario, it requires our seller now to disclose where the water source comes from. Is it well water or is it community water provided by the city? because that should give a buyer a heads up on, if it's coming from the city, then that's coming from a water plant that's probably treated. If it's coming from a well, I may have to have a well inspection as part of my home inspection, so I would communicate that to my home inspector as well, all right? And if you're getting an FHA insured loan, they actually require wells to be inspected. So when you're teaming up with that home inspector, that might be another question. Can you do well inspections? Can you, can you do a percolation test, a perk test? There's, I know there's a couple of questions people have told me about wetland. Wetland. Wetlands is an area that is protected under federal protection based upon the three toad flying swamp or whatever it is that they're trying to protect. I, I, I don't know, I made that up. I'm not, I'm not sure what a three toad flying swamp is. Go ahead. You seem to be breaking up, Raymond. It's coming in a little choppy. I hope it's not because I'm over driving the volume. I wonder if the weather today is causing us issues down here in Nashville. We have tried to get everything off of our system so that this is the only streaming issue that I've got. Um, from my vantage point, I will tell you, Shauna, it, none of you guys seem to be breaking up. So I, I can't really tell if it does, so you might want to and thank you for letting me know. We can't hear you. Your voice completely cut. Thumbs up. It's lagging.
Sounds like Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like it may be your mic. It, it should not be my mic. It's my mic shows. It's a lot clearer now than it just was. Alright, hold on one second. Check test. This is now using the microphone from the computer. Does it seem to be working better? Yeah. Way better. Wonder why that is doing that. Check test one. Yeah, my microphone shows nothing's working, so I don't know if it's a wireless. Maybe the mic was going bad. At what point did we get lost? You heard the Michael Sims story, right? Somebody give me a thumbs up so I know you're actually hearing what I'm saying now. Okay. Did we hear the drink, the groundwater? Wetlands. That's where we're at. Yeah, uh, I mean. I have no idea as to why that is, it is showing a constant spike in volume so it may be the microphone i apologize the only problem with the computer microphone is if i do this it's hard to hear so i'll try not to do that not that i've ever done that yet so the underground storage tanks now it makes more sense to me underground storage tanks an underground storage tank was a tank that was buried in the ground and most of the time it was used for storing petroleum and those gas stations and convenience stores on the corner okay now the feds wanted to go after not necessarily the underground storage tanks but what we used to call the leaking underground storage tanks all right it was called a lust leaking underground storage tank and they really couldn't go after the gas stations directly so virtually what they did is they made some legal requirements that all of these tanks that contained liquids were going to be put under the control of the federal Reserve, or federal government, except for, and then they gave a few exemptions. If you notice on page 412, there are some bullet points with exemptions on that. Things like tanks that hold less than 110 gallons. Now, one of the things back up, when I was in the corporate world, I used to tell people, you guys all understand that the EPA doesn't really care about you. They really care about Indianapolis as a whole. And if you don't believe me, look at this first rule. If there is a storage tank that broke open and it's less than 110 gallons, it doesn't even qualify under the federal terms. So how many gallons of gas would you need to drink to die? I guarantee it's less than 110 gallons. But if there's a spill of less than 110 gallons, it's not even covered under this rule because it's an exemption. What they're worried about are leaks or spillages of 4,000 gallons or 50,000 gallons. They don't really care on anything below 110. Tanks on 
Yes. So recently there was that tanker that spilled over here off, um, uh, what was that, like 465 or whatever going yeah. well? And I, I'm not sure if the contents that it was carrying, but if it was some kind of gas or anything like that, that could have affected the groundwater in that area. If it's under 110, even if it's a moving tank, does that not fall under it the federal? Not fall under the federal requirements of being, yes, because it's less than 110. But my guess is that tanker was holding more than 110 gallons. All right. So IDEM, which is the Indiana Department of Management, would still be interested and they would go out to ensure that there would be no leaking into the groundwater. And they've got these things called pigs. They're really solid, look like a giant long sausage that they would try and put a dam around where the liquid is so it wouldn't get to the ground. And then there's methods to suck the oil up. And there are companies out there, uh, QEPI that do this kind of environmental emergency cleanup or hazmat cleanup that they would probably call in. But what I'm talking about is under these federal laws that we're going to talk about, the, the tanks that held 100 less than 110 gallons were exempt. So like your gasoline tank in your garage, your five gallon tank for your, if you spilled that five gallon tank, that is not going to be a federal emergency or require the feds to come in and control it and clean it up because it's less than 110 gallons. Cameron? Question. So say these like 110 or more gallons like does end up leaking out. Do you have to pay for that or would the, like the government just go ahead and take care of it? when they clean it up. No, you would pay for the cleanup. Dang. Yeah. If, if that, whoever that tanker company was, and I remember when it happened, that company would pay that hazmat bill to clean that up so that they would be the ones liable for it. Is right? that usually pretty expensive? Yes, very expensive. And like from a 55 gallon drum of like hazardous material in 1999 was like $500 to dispose of. I'm sure probably now it's three or four times that per drum. And they would dig up the soil, the top soil, so they would get all of it and put it in drums and they have to take it to a special place uh, that would either burn it or they would encapsulate it which we're going to talk about here in just a minute. The Resource Conservation Recovery Act, that's the federal law we're talking about, RECRA, RCRA. These were the ones that gave the EPA the authority and develop a management program of the underground storage tanks. So EPA gave RECRA, which is a law, the authority to manage these tanks throughout the United States but they excluded some of the tanks so that they wouldn't be inundated with like spills of five gallons or 20 gallons or 50 gallons. They were more interested in protecting the people based on large gallons. So if the tank held less than 110, it is exempt from RECRA. If it was a farm tank used to fuel farm vehicles, it was also exempt. If it was a heating oil, it is exempt. So you will see these in old farmhouses that you may sell that may have been used to have been heated with oil and they may still have the oil tank in the basement. That tank is exempt from the RECRA laws. If it spills, it is not a federal emergency. <clears throat> 